It's like a Surface Pro 9 on steroids. I mean, just look at this thing. It's the new ASUS ROG Flow Z13 as I get chucked off my bike. This is, according to ROG, the fastest gaming tablet in the world. A big thank you to ASUS ROG for sending this out for me to have a play with and also partnering with me on this video. And I've got to say, this is one of the most interesting and certainly unique gaming devices that you can buy. I mean, for starters, just look at this thing. It's completely nuts and arguably a bit of a fashion accessory, although perhaps not exactly my style. And it's also draw droppingly fast. With up to a 13th gen i9, an RTX 4070, uh, 32 gigs of RAM on this particular model, a terabyte storage. And this is not even its final form. Obviously you've got the uh, folio case you can plug in here, but you can also buy the optional XG mobile dock, which can uh, come with up to a 4090, which can plug directly in here and soup up your graphics even more. Now, if you're thinking, holy moly, Tom, what is that? I hate it. And you might do. Obviously, design is very subjective and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, the good news is they are also launching a regular uh, normal Z13 as well as this. This is the special edition Z13 acronym. Firstly, let's talk specs, and we get a 13.4 inch, 165Hz, Quad HD+, 500 nit HDR display. Now it is IPS, not OLED or Mini LED, sadly. We also get an i9 CPU, that's an H series chip, and a 4070 GPU. My only issue is if you do want the top spec 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM, then you are forced to go with this acronym version. We also get an improved vapor chamber cooling system. We get Nvidia's advanced Optimus that can control the MUX switch for you, which basically means this can switch between the integrated and the discrete GPUs depending on how you're using it, and means you can get at least some decent battery life when you're not gaming. This adjustable kickstand gives us up to 170 degrees of flexibility, so it can almost lie flat. And actually, if you are gonna use this more as a creative tool and perhaps use the pen with it, then this angle is actually really quite nice for your doodling and your drawing. And if you really want to, you can also use this stand in portrait mode, like that, perhaps if you're coding or you just want it to look extra cool. And of course, the full size and backlit keyboard is detachable. So you can go around using this as a tablet, quite a hefty tablet, but it's an option. Now the keyboard is very nice to use for a folio and acronyms design is all over the place here from the three tone keycaps to their funky font, but it can all get a bit busy. They've kind of added their own little alphabet uh, style typography underneath the regular characters. And at first glance, it can get a little bit confusing about what key you're actually pressing. Uh, so, I mean, it works fine. I just don't necessarily love the design of this thing, but what do you think? Also, bear in mind this is not a Bluetooth keyboard, so it does need to be attached to the tablet to use it. Now, before we get to the gaming performance and everything else, we have to talk about this. It's one of the most uniquely designed laptop slash two-in-one things I've used in a long time. Now, this is the second time ROG have teamed up with the fashion brand Acronym, who specialize in high-tech, cyberpunky slash utilitarian designs and apparel. And as a bit of a fashion expert myself, which I'm sure you'll agree, uh, it is certainly something. The custom aluminium alloy chassis, the CNC machine lines, and the laser etched logos definitely look the part, with the rubber grips and also pretty hefty drop resistant metal bumpers on the corners, adding some function as well as form. Although I'm not overly convinced the internal components would survive a full on drop despite these bumpers. The downside is these chunky bumpers significantly add to the overall size and therefore portability. And arguably, it does look a bit like an industrial prototype, and of course, all that metal adds to the weight. We're talking 1.32 kilograms versus 1.18 on the regular Z13. And then once you add the folio keyboard, this is hefty. But wait, there's more. Because these little corner bumpers are also uh, where you attach these straps, which come bundled with this acronym version. If you've ever wanted to carry your big metal gaming tablet as a bit of a fashion accessory, then well, now's your chance. This multifunctional strap acts as a carry handle in briefcase mode. You just want to carry it by your side. Also as a shoulder strap for shoulder mode, so you can carry it like a satchel, or if you really have no shame, in what they call producer mode for hands-free use. Although I must admit I'm a bit more of a chuck it in a backpack kind of guy. They do also bundle this little Velcro pouch, uh, which also has a strap, which is kind of handy for carrying around the power adapter and maybe the pen with it as well. And you can see just how compact and portable this is. It actually fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, and also it's a 130 watt power adapter and it does charge via USB-C. 
And finally, we also get this acronym edition of the ASUS Pen 2, because ROG are keen to stress that despite gamers literally being in their ROG name, this is also meant for creators, editors, devs, designers, anyone who needs a portable and powerful machine with a color accurate touchscreen. You might get a few looks pulling this out in a meeting, but is that a bad thing? Okay, enough waffling on about this design, let's talk about performance. Just how fast is the world's fastest gaming tablet? Well, bear in mind, despite the impressive i9 and 4070 specs on paper, these are the more efficient mid-range parts in terms of power. Both the H-Series i9 and the 4070 run at around 65 watts, with the latter benefiting from ROG's 15 watts of dynamic boost. Although the wattage of the CPU and the GPU will dynamically adapt based on the task and also the performance mode that you're in. Also, bear in mind only the storage is upgradable here, so if you are going to buy one, I would opt for the higher spec 16 gig version on the regular Z13, although as I say, this acronym gets 32 gigs. Okay, so let's bring in the results from Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Time Spy, and also a handful of games, all tested with high settings at native Quad HD Plus, and with DLSS enabled, of course, in games that support it, because I don't know why you'd play without it. In Forza Horizon 5, we're just shy of triple digits in the benchmark, although actually playing it, I found it was more like in the 110s. Cyberpunk in RT Ultra Mode averaged just shy of 60 FPS, and Nvidia's frame generation, exclusive to the 40 series of cards, definitely helps here, because without it, it drops to around 48. Frame gen also makes all the difference in Flight Simulator, and in Rainbow Six Siege, again maxed out, we are easily taking advantage of that 165Hz refresh rate. Now I'm testing the 4070 version here, and compared to the 4050, this is around 20% faster in terms of GPU performance. Jumping into the Armory Crate app, which gives you access to all the hardware info, lighting, audio, their fancy ROG wallpapers, which are actually very nice, all the bells and whistles. And there are four standard profiles, Silent, Performance, Turbo, and Manual, with additional GPU-only options to choose from, including Ultimate, which only uses the dedicated GPU. And this is what I've been using for my testing, although most of the time I stick with Standard, which enables the advanced Optimus. Can you hear that? So that is what it sounds like under load running a gaming benchmark. And it's around, I think, about 50 dB from my tests. Um, you can actually have this completely silent if you put it in silent mode, and the fans will only kick in when the temperatures hit over 50 degrees Celsius. So everyday use in terms of like, you know, browsing Chrome, watching YouTube, doing office work, the fans do kick in. You can just about hear it, but it's not particularly significant. Even under load, it's doing a pretty good job with these cooling vents at the top, which really are blasting out quite a lot of warm air, and also the vapor chamber cooling inside. I think it does a pretty good job over role keeping the noise and the heat under control. And actually one benefit of having a folio keyboard is there isn't really much heat transfer, unlike regular laptops where the fans and all the components are underneath and the you know heat rises. With this, the touchpad, the keyboard all stay nice and cool throughout. As for battery, well, we have a decent size 56 watt hour cell in here, which I don't think is too bad at all, given, you know, it's a 13 inch tablet. And with the standard profile and regular non-gaming use, I get about five hours, maybe just under five hours from this. Not great, not terrible. Not great, not terrible. The screen is a real highlight though, and as I say, while OLED or mini LED would have been nice, and the absence is a bit surprising for an ASUS ROG product, and especially one with their Nebula HDR branding, this is still a top-notch IPS, giving us 100% sRGB, 85% Adobe RGB, and 98% P3 coverage. We also get HDR10 and Dolby Vision support, which is great for watching a bit of Netflix in HDR, and I measured a peak brightness of 475 nits. Elsewhere, we have a 5 megapixel webcam up front with Windows Hello support, as well as a 13 megapixel rear camera, stereo mics, and stereo speakers, which do a decent job, but they're nothing really special. As always, a good pair of headphones is the way to go. Okay, so let's wrap up, and let's start with the good stuff. And it certainly is a very unique design, not least for being an incredibly powerful two-in-one gaming laptop slash tablet thing, but of course also this uh, collaboration with the acronym designer. Lovely display, really impressive performance, 32 gigs of RAM on this particular model is nice as well. It stays pretty cool and quiet, and it's also relatively portable. I mean, for a gaming laptop, though, these chunky bumpers and the added weight of this metal chassis does certainly make it a bit more of a chunky monkey than the other regular Z13. 
Which brings me to the bad stuff. And you may absolutely hate this design and also not really appreciate that it does add that extra bulk. The battery life is not great at all. It is very average and it is also quite expensive. Now this is gonna start at around $1,750 or about 2,000 pounds for the 4050 and go up from there. And I believe this acronym model will start at around 2,500 or slightly above uh, in the US. I'm not sure about UK pricing, but I will uh, update pricing and leave links in the description below if you do fancy checking this out. And of course, you do also have the option of the XG Mobile Dock, which is quite expensive by itself. But ASUS have shown over the last few years that they are continuing to support it. And it is a great way of maybe down the line upgrading the GPU of this, albeit externally. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy something like this? Or do you think perhaps it's a bit of a gimmicky design? Let me know what you make of the Flow Z13 in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.